Hi, this video is aimed at uh, you guys traveling to Norway for the first time. Uh, just to give you some information on tackle and types of stuff you should really need to take and a few little tips later on on, on what to do when you're there. Um, so to start with, we always get asked with, you know, what tackle, what terminal tackle, how much do I need, etc, etc. You don't actually need a lot to go to Norway because you shouldn't really lose too much gear. It's straightforward fishing. Uh, to start with, you know, the rod is always the first uh, question. You know, get yourself um, a reasonably tidy 20 to 30 pound travel rod or if you're going to take a rod tube, you know, a two piece or even a solid. You don't really need anything more than that. I also take 12 to 20 uh, just to do some light fishing, whether it's for place or a bit of fun fishing with cold fish, etc. Uh, this I do, I do take a, um, a 12 to 22 piece rod um, and I mount that with a fixed spool. 5500, 6500 sort of size. And then for your everyday sort of halibut, cod, cold fish, 12, 20, 20, 30 is, is, is more than an adequate uh, size. Um, and then when it comes to the reel, you know, you need to try and get yourself a reasonably good um, lever drag. So that you've got uh, plenty of control when you're when you're hooking up, etc. It's easier to use on the star drag and it also gives you the free spool motion so you can lock it into gear when the fish is, is taking your bait. I fill mine with uh, 80 pound braid, but generally 50, 60 pound is, is more than adequate. Uh, I also use multicolored for depth changes. Uh, this helps, you know, decide where you know, if you find a fish on a sounder, you can judge what depth you're at uh, and get your, your lures into the right sort of area that you need to be in. You know, you're not always fishing hard on the bottom. You know, this, this is columns of water from 50 to zero up or even more. They, the fish will be there somewhere. So I always use, uh, even with halibut fishing, you know, it's helpful to find out what depths you are moving up and down in the column. Um, you, know, you don't have to spend a fortune, but I recommend you get something that's got about seven to 13 kilos of drag. You know, especially if you do hit into some bigger fish, some big halibut, you know, you, you need a bit of guts there to help slow that fish down at some point. And to do that, then I just mount obviously onto the rod and then terminal tackle wise, the way I fish, everyone's got their own way of doing it. And someone's always got a better way than you, but over 10 years, this is the way I like to fish. And I just basically float in bead on the top on my main line. I'm a nice big heavy duty barrel swivel, 250 to 500 pound strain. And then I run about 100 to 150 pound, very supple mono um, for the length of the rod that you're using. So I, my rods are quite short. I use jigging rods, so they're like five foot six, six foot long at the most. So that's the length of the mono that I take from the rod. And then at the bottom end, again, another big heavy duty barrel swivel, same sort of weight as above. And a nice then heavy duty split ring at the bottom. This one here, 500 pound breaking string. And then that's what I use to connect to either my uh, shad perk or your live bait rig. Quite straightforward. Knots, there's lots of knots. But just pick a good one that's easy to tie. The reason I don't tie my braid to my main line is because I prefer to fish this way. With a floating bead at the top, it gives me more of an indication of where my line is in the water, especially if maneuvering the boat with other guys on board, you know, you, you got to do two things at the same time sometimes. So it just gives you an indication of where your line is going. Uh, but also, you know, if you do get a snap off or, you know, you need to change your mono because it's worn or something, you know, sometimes the seas can be a little bit rolly and trying to tie braid to mono direct can be a little bit of a fiddle at sea. So, you know, if you've got two hard components to tie to, it just makes things a little bit easier in my point of view. Then basically at the bottom end, then the business end, you've got multiple arrays of shads you can purchase. My personal sort of size is, is this one here, which is around 560 grams. You might think that's a bit big, but trust me, it's not. 
I've had fish on the same size, on the same size lure. So, you know, if they're feeding, they'll have a go at anything. And then occasionally, you know, you might find that a perk will work a bit better. Fast dropping ones I tend to use with a small treble, not a huge treble, something like a 4.0 treble on the bottom with an assist up on the top. Um, another new way of doing things uh, with lures at the moment is going back to the 12 to 20 with a spool reel as we now fish in with these smaller sand eel type lures ranging from 150 grams up to 265 grams that sort of area um, what we're doing with these is it's a bit like spinning but we tend I tend to get the guys to um, cast down drift so that the boat is catching up with the lure eventually because um, they're not too heavy and you know you down in 40 50 meters of water they take a bit longer to get down to the bottom so if you cast down drift as far as you can and then as the boat is drifting towards your lure your lure is making its way down once it gets down then repeatedly crank four or five six turns and stop crank four or five six turns and stop and just keep on bringing it all the way back to the surface don't 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 stop halfway and go back down bring it all the way up because you'll often find that these might get taken very close to the surface uh, especially for cold fish um, and we are catching halibut on on these smaller lures as well so you know working up and down through the column fast stop spot start stop methods you know with a 12 to 20 flexible rod it's 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 good fun and uh, you know it's 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 another way of changing your um chances of catching fish of course the other reason why i term all my my lines with them that way is um you know if you wanted to change over for halibut fishing uh and you want to fish dead baits uh it's quite simple just to one clip your shad or, or or perk or whatever you're using and swap straight over to dead bait rig which is consists of quite simply an anti-twist weight come in slightly different shapes but generally like that and then off that um the, again you've got a split ring and a, another heavy duty swivel 300 400 pound whatever you can get hold of and then i run a 200 pound mono uh, again using something a bit more supple and a bit more more fluid in the water than the than the heavy duty stuff and then at the business end i prefer to fish with two treble hooks so you've got your main hook cast further up which goes through the nose of the dead fish and then the second one i tend to take it around the back and hook through just behind the dorsal fin just through the skin so that the whole hook is virtually present and then you know you take it down to the bottom and you, you come up a few turns uh, leave it there for a while and then keep coming up a few more turns and you just need to work us up and down in the column from the from the from the floor up to about 20 meters depending on what depth you're fishing in say for argument's sake 50 50 55 meters you know work it within the, uh, the from the floor up to within you know come up 20 meters then take it down you know and just keep moving it about every few minutes in that column and presenting the bait in, in different areas you know the, the, the halibut will come right to the surface we, we we have had them follow these right to the surface so you know don't be don't be scared that you've got to be on the bottom all the time that, that, that's not the case and you know these rigs are quite simple to tie tie a few of these before you go out and then you know it's it's it's, it's quite straightforward fishing you know you, you don't have to make it too complicated not so quite straightforward as long as it's a good one you know these methods are all tried and tested for years and years and years